I just found my lip gloss. It's always, I always find it in the bottom of knitting bags because we'll go get in the car somewhere and I'll just take my knitting and throw my lip gloss in. So, so glad that I found that. My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 63 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, and I am coming to you from just outside of Dallas, Texas. So welcome if you are new here. Like I said, my name is Natalie. I live with my husband, Kent, and my dog, toaster and I am an elementary school teacher by day. Just two more weeks of school left though. Super excited about that. Um, I have lots of great stuff today. I have another finished object. I know. Who am I? I actually kind of have two finished objects um, but one is a design so it doesn't really count because it's not super finished yet because it's not a published pattern. Um, I also have a giveaway later. Um, if you see the sign right here, I just hit 3,000 subscribers today. Thank you so, so much. I'm, I'm gonna talk about it more later, but it just absolutely means the world to me. Um, so stick around for more info on that in the news section. Um, but more excitingly, I have a collaboration this week. So this week I am collaborating with Holly, who is the proper pineapple. And Holly is a wife and a mom of three that lives in Michigan. They actually live in Texas right now for the winter, which it's summer here now, so I don't know, not really winter anymore. Um, but she is so amazing. She has beautiful, beautiful crochet designs. She is really well known for her crochet dolls. They are impeccable. They're like 18 inches tall, the cutest little things. She loves, loves, loves bright colors. I think as soon as you click on her page, you are going to notice that. And she has been crocheting for 16 years, but just learned to knit two years ago, which I think is super, super cool. So Holly and I are going to be answering the same six questions. I couldn't narrow it down to five this week, so six questions. Um, if you wanna go check out Holly, which you totally should, um, I will have her channel and her podcast episode linked in the description box. So head over there and give her some love, subscribe to her, watch her episode, and um, you know, hear her questions because she's going to have different answers than me and that's going to be so fun. But I'll be answering later in the um, question segment of my podcast. I wanted to share one more thing about Holly. I'm looking at what she sent me because this is just so cool. Um, they have three cats, two dogs, and one of their dogs just had puppies. Oh my gosh, puppies are so cute. I don't know why that just like hit me because I love Toaster, but Puppies are pretty cute too. <laughs> anyway, go check out the proper pineapple, Holly. Um, all of her information is below. So let's get started with some knitting and crochet. I have a finished object to show you. Um, so I have finished a another kind of winter make, something I'm not gonna get to wear right now because in Texas it's you know 80 degrees at least, getting hotter by the day. But I have finished my blur shawl. It is so huge, I can't fit it on the screen, but I do have a video of this laid out across my couch and it literally takes up the entire thing and hangs off the edge. That's how I blocked it because it didn't it didn't really need blocking. It just, just needed laying out. So this is the blur shawl by Deanne Ramsey, Addie Day Designs. And I thought I was saying her name wrong and somebody said, nope, it's a Deanne, you're right. So I'm so glad because I do not like, I don't like to say people's names wrong. I feel like it's the ultimate respect to be able to say somebody's name properly. So if I ever say a name or a word wrong, you guys tell me, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know so I can say it properly. Um, but this is just a really fun, simple crochet crescent shape shawl. Um, I think, I can't remember how many sizes there are, but I know I made the largest size and I also made the one where the stripes get gradually smaller as you go because of the yarn that I had. Instead of doing six colors, I did five colors and I just used the same color at the top and at the bottom in order to use five instead of six colors and still not 
and still have yarn left over. I do have my yarn here, so I was gonna show you what I have left. Um, so this is a really great pattern for using up stash yarn because you can use um, those single skeins of sock yarn that we inevitably collect um, and you can combine a bunch of different ones. So let's see here. I have the least of this color here, which is one of my yarn at home mom, I believe. And which one is it? Sorry. Here we go. Yarn at home mom, pictures of you. And that was my fifth color, I believe. So my second to last color kind of blends in there. So it's a little bit hard to see. And then another yarn at home mom. This one is called Calmiopsis or something. I, I've never really learned what that is, but the second least amount and that was my um, fourth color. So fourth and third for me use the most, but still a decent amount left, nothing to worry about. I had the most of my second and third colors left. This one's pretty small. I haven't stopped to rewind it yet. I have a ton of this one still. These are both Hufflepuff yarns that I got in my advent calendars from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. So they don't have colorway names except that they were part of the Hufflepuff um, advent calendar. So I have so much of this one, I might actually just re-cake it instead of ball it. This one I will probably ball. Hopefully I have 40 grams so I can split it into two 20s and keep 20 for myself and give 20 to somebody else to do a scrappy project. That's kind of what I'm hoping. But this I might do like some Hufflepuff socks. Um, my sister's a Hufflepuff too and she loves hand knit socks so she'd probably really like that if I made her some Hufflepuff socks. And then for my last one, this is Savvy Skeins and the colorway Boots and Spurs. I've tried to use this color for so many projects. I've tried to use it for a design. I tried to use it for something else. And I finally found a project that I think it works great in. It is a sparkle base, which I'm not sure if that's showing up, but it's not so sparkly that it looks out of place, but it's a, it is a reason why I wanted it to be the first and last color. So it wasn't just like sparkle in the middle, <laughs> which I th don't think would have been a huge problem. I just would have probably put it in this, in the exact middle. Um, but it worked out great. So this thing is all blocked, all the ends are woven in, it's 100% done. I didn't wanna leave it lingering. Um, I just finished it yesterday and when I was doing the border, it's got a really subtle, that's the wrong side, hold on. It's got a really subtle, simple border on it. And when I was doing the border, it was ruffling just a tad and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Um, I actually started it the night before and then thought, you know what, let me just wait till tomorrow and see if I wanna change this or not do a border. And I decided to carry on with it, but when I blocked it, I left that end hanging out in case I wanted to change it. But after blocking, it's stretched out, it doesn't ruffle, um, and it looks great. And I also did not change, um, if you're making this pattern, it says to go up a hook size, I believe, for the border, and I did not. I didn't go up a hook size for any part of it. So maybe that helped not have as much ruffling, but I think it turned out great and it just looks like it's so subtle far away, you wouldn't even know that it's almost like a shell, um, but it does look more finished. So I will, I haven't gotten pictures of this, so it's gonna stay out for a little while, but then it's gonna get put away for winter because there's no way I am wearing this right now. But it turned out so nice and so soft. Colors are completely different for me. Um, definitely don't make a lot of things yellow, green, or brown. So this is gonna be something that hopefully I will incorporate into my wardrobe since I mostly wear t-shirts like this. Whoa, oops, let me just set that on the ground. <laughs> since I mostly wear plain t-shirts, it will go with everything. So it'll be great, but so happy that, um, I can't remember who it was. I think I was just talking to you on Instagram. Introduced me to Addie Day Designs and I just, I love her stuff. So excellent crochet designer, go check her out. She's got tons of beautiful patterns. Okay, I also have a new sweater cast on. So I was talking about it last week that I really wanted to find a summer top that I could use this cotton yarn that I have. So let me show you the yarn first and then I will show you which pattern I ended up settling on. Um, so here's the yarn. Now my labels are on the floor and I can't get them. Okay, 
This is Darlin Wool Cotton, 50% Wool, 50% Cotton by um, Gritty Knits. And the colorway is Josephine. So it's a, uh, like the label said, 50% wool, 50% cotton. It, I mean, feels like 100% cotton, but it's not rough. And it does have good drape. So I think that's what the wool adds to it. I've never knit or made a garment with this type of um, fabric before, or um, what's it called? fiber <laughs> this type of fiber before so I know it's going to be a little bit different like you can see it holds wrinkles um, pretty badly like this swatch is was just tucked away whereas wool you can kind of I don't know it kind of comes apart a little or like falls out a little better um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes um, but I definitely wanted to find a pattern that was gonna be great for me um, for summer that I could actually wear now I don't think there's really any knitwear that is appropriate for summer in Texas if you're going to be wearing it outside. But indoors, something that has no sleeves or short sleeves and is cotton is going to be great. So I did settle on Lilium by Megan Nodecker, who is Pip and Pin. Um, I this was another designer that somebody on Instagram introduced me to. So thank you so much because. Megan has so many amazing, incredible patterns. Sorry, I'm clicking my needles together. Hang on. Okay, that's better. So I have done just a little bit of work and, well, actually a lot of work, but this pattern has a lot of details and right now I'm knitting on size one needles. <laughs> it's just gonna be for the top. I'm gonna do size three for the majority of it um, but the pattern actually calls for a four but I'm just a looser knitter so I had to go down a needle size but anyway this is what I have so far and it's just so pretty and delicate I know when this blocks it's just going to open up this lace and it's going to be gorgeous so some things that I already love about this pattern are this fold over hem I'm at the neckline so if you can imagine um, this is the neckline it's not this high but this is the neck and it's got just the loveliest details so this fold over hem is just so pretty and then it's got this little bit of lace and i think it's only enough that it's not going to drop down too low for me that's something that's important i don't want anything too revealing um, i also just want to be able to wear simple like regular undergarments and not have to fuss around with something strapless. So that's important to me. Um, but I have just finished the lace for my size. And what I'm about to do next is make basically another sort of fold over thing here, but a welt. Um, and that just defines the, the finish of the, I guess it would kind of be a yoke um, before you basically carry into stockinette. So the rest of the, sweater is stockinette and I'll be using the larger needles so I'm excited to get to work on this because it's fun to do things that are different and more complicated um, but I'm also looking forward to the part where I'm just on the body and I can knit 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 and it becomes more of a nighttime TV kind of thing I am not a hundred percent certain what I'm gonna do yet if I'm going to blend these two with hand dyed yarns it's always best if you can um, alternate but with the cotton I'm a little worried about how it will do even with helical knitting so I am just using one skein right now I'm gonna do one skein for the entire um, like the lace and all of the complicated stuff and then I might start blending in my second skein at least for the body and just do that the whole way hopefully helical knitting will be fine and it won't pull or do anything extra with the cotton I feel like you can just see like mistakes and tight stitches more in cotton than you can in wool wool is just more forgiving so this is just a lesson for me to see um, i'm also knowingly going into this short some yarn yardage so i'm probably going to either have to modify the increases or shorten it a little bit which should be fine um, basically i'm going to get to the point in the body where I'm like done. And then I haven't looked far enough ahead yet to know if the sleeves have something where you have to pick up after. But if, if they do, I'm gonna get to a point in the body where I'm under the underarms, then I'll go back and finish the sleeves. So I know that up here and here, 
I've got all the yarn that I need, and then I can just work on the body until I'm almost out of yarn. So that's my plan. So we'll see in a couple months, uh, because that's how long it's probably gonna take me if, uh, if this works out. And if not, we can rip it out. It's not a big deal. Um, I am doing a kind of different uh, knitting in the round technique here. Um, I have two 32 inch circular needles because I did start this, well, here's the thing. I don't have a 24 inch size one needle, so I couldn't knit in the round. Um, I tried to magic loop for the top and it was just uncomfortable. Um, there's just too many stitches to magic loop, so I got my two um, 32 inch circulars. And if you have not done this technique before, it's really easy, it's really great. It is a little fiddly sometimes when you're changing needles, but basically, let me see if I can show you real fast. Basically, you set it up a little bit like magic loop where you've got half your stitches on one, or you've got your stitches split in half. Half your stitches are on one needle, so here's one needle. And when I knit on these stitches, I use these two needles. So I just knit, 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 and then I'm done with that needle. I drop it, and then I pick up the next needle, and I use just that one needle, both tips from that one needle and knit on those stitches and then I drop it and I'm done. It can be easy to accidentally go, like when you're switching sides, like use this needle and the needle in the back. Don't do that. If you do, it's not a big deal. You can just rearrange, but knitting in the round on two circular needles, it's a good skill to have when you lack the proper, <laughs> the proper size needles to do things. So I'm loving this. I cannot wait to um, I think I have just a few more rounds and then I get to do that welt and then we get to start like really shaping the rest of the sweater. So I'm super excited to do that. Okay, so lastly, I am working on some socks. My May socks, I'm definitely behind where I usually like to be, which is I like to do like a half a sock every week so that I can finish two pair, no, a pair, two socks in a month. Um, but that's okay, I am, I'm, I didn't knit socks in April or March, so just knitting socks in May is enough. Um, but look at this colorway. So I didn't know what was gonna happen last week. I think I was right here. That's my cute little marker from Molly Klein Design. Um, here, let me show you the yarn first and I'll talk more about the striping. So this is a Texas dyer. Oh, got it. Here's the other, the other skein. Um, this is mustache yarn, yarns, no yarn, mustache yarn, and the colorway Jelly Belly. So in this, like, at least I'm not educated enough in self-striping yarn to know what this is going to look like. So it's kind of a surprise once you start knitting it. Um, but I was confused because I had a little bit of purple, a little bit of purple, and a lot of blue, and I'm like, what is going to happen? And then I had a little bit of dark blue and then all of a sudden light green. So I'm like, what? Okay, what is the pattern here? So now you can probably tell that it is a large bit of a light color and then a tiny stripe of a dark color. And then it just alternates. So I have light yellow for a little, about, blah, 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 little while longer and then I'm gonna have a darker yellow for a teeny little stripe. And then next I have like this light peach and then we'll just see what happens from there. So that's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Um, I've got my, the one, the ball that I'm currently working on in my 50 gram mini yarn cozy. I have taken it off since I started so it looks a little messy. I had to weigh it and see. <laughs> there, that's better. I had to weigh it and see how much yarn I used for it, um, but I haven't been able to make a second cozy yet because all of my size one needles are hostage because I only have three, because usually I'm not knitting three socks at a time. So two of them are on my sweater, on my Lilium, and one's on here. So I haven't been able to knit another cozy yet. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, so when it is free, I will be making a second 50 gram cozy to put on this, and then I also probably go ahead and start the second sock so that I have all of that going. But I am liking these May socks. They're a lot of fun, and I have been bringing them. Sometimes we'll go drive around in the car, play some Pokemon, go pick up dinner, and I will bring them for that. So they have been getting a decent amount of work lately, which is great. 
Okay, one more thing that I have been working on are my mini cozy patterns. Um, so you just saw the 50 gram one. I'm trying to tuck this away. I've got a I've got a nail that's breaking, so it keeps snagging my yarn. I need to fix that. But this is something that I had just started working on last week. This is the 20 gram mini yarn cozy light. So inside here is a 20 gram cake, and I had this is my very first prototype for the 20 gram cozy. So I really need to test this like as soon as possible and see how it does as I you know, use this yarn. So I think I might go do later today or maybe tomorrow when I'm editing this, I'll do a stripe on my granny stripe blanket and use this yarn and then just see how the cozy does. So I'm excited for this. I did share last week that I have this silk and wool yarn in a rainbow pack. So how fun would it be to have a rainbow of mini yarn cozies? I think that would be so cute. Um, but I haven't really made any more progress since making this one because my needles are hostage. So I really need to get that sweater moving so I can have my needles back and start making more cozies. Um, but I think this is going really, really well. Now, as far as um, when that pattern is coming out, it's coming out on May 29th. And I think that's right, fr the last Friday in May. Um, and I am not doing a tester call for that one because I have a whole bunch of people on my list from when I called for testers for the original yarn, Cozy Light. So I have contacted them and I have a bunch of people eager and ready to test. So that's why I'm gonna get that one done quickly and get it out. So don't be mad <laughs> that I didn't offer this one to everyone again, but I do still have plans to make even more versions of those cozies. Plus in between, I think I might stop and do a skinny can version of my classic can cozy because summer is coming up and it's time to get those skinny cans out <laughs> and so i think that i'm going to stop and do that before moving on to more cozies i'm cozy obsessed I, I can't help it i think cozies are the perfect thing to work on in the summer because they're small portable and not going to make you hot um, plus you can use them right away so that is an update on the mini yarn cozy light, but stay tuned for its release on May 29th. Okay, let's do some questions. Don't forget to go check out Holly's Answers, Holly from The Proper Pineapple. Her podcast is linked down below and it is already out because it came out on Tuesday. So you can go check out all of her answers to these six questions. So I'm gonna answer those questions um, first. These came from Instagram, so if you want to be um, part of the crew that offers these fun questions for us when I do collaborations with other podcasters. Um, make sure you're following me on Instagram, sorry, at Nitty Natty, and I will put out a question box before um, we record for that week. And then I'm also going to try, um, if I don't go too long, to answer some questions from the Ravelry group. So if you have um, questions that you want to ask for me specifically, head over to the Love and Stitches Ravelry group. And there is a, a thread at the top called Ask Me, and you can put your questions there. I'm trying to keep up with those because I, I kind of put them off and then it would be like two weeks and somebody would have a pattern question and I felt guilty. So I'm trying to keep up with those two. So lots of questions today. But first, the questions that Holly and I are answering together. So first, what is your design process. So for me, I typically um, come up with a concept first, like uh, I might see um, like a problem or a need or something that is not out there that I want to create. So like for Yarn Cozy, that was a need for Float Tote, a need um, for uh, my Louisiana street shawl, I was thinking I want to do something different. I want to do a shawl that starts at the big end and then goes decreases down to the small end because I personally hate it when the rows get longer and longer. I mean, I don't hate it, but it's just, it's, it feels good when they get smaller. So I thought, how fun would that be? Let's try that out. So that's kind of where I start is with a concept. Um, and then depending on the what it is, like I might start 
swatching some stitch patterns, like especially shawls, I'll swatch stitch patterns and then I'll start practicing increases and decreases with it and I end up with this super long, ugly swatch that's really, really helpful for me. Um, if it's if something with shaping, like the cozy, I'll just, I'll start and I'll have my computer right next to me and kind of design along the way. So I, I'm not the kind of person that types everything up first unless it's a pattern that I'm just adapting. Like for the mini yarn cozy light, I kind of typed everything up first and then I started practicing with it and I had to tweak along the way. Usually it's computer and yarn and needles or hook and I am doing it side by side. The only pattern for me that has been way different is Architectura because that was much more complicated and with that I had a lot of like virtual knitting time where I was using spreadsheets to plan out increases, decreases, color changes, and stitch patterns so that when I went to do a section it went smoothly. But that I had to learn trial and error. So that's my process, concept and then swatching and then design as I go but always write things down because you will not remember. You think you will, but you won't. <laughs> okay, the second question is, what are your favorite colors to work with slash how do you choose colors for a project or a design? So this question was asked twice as well as the design process one, so I wanted to make sure that both Holly and I answered those. So my favorite colors to work with are pink and pink. <laughs> um, I really like um, most shades of pink, but I also, have been drawn to like that dusty rose purpley color kind of like this right here actually um, but I love light pink I like hot pink I don't discriminate against pink really um, I love it I also like to um, change things up I don't know I have all kinds of colors in my stash for garments, I tend to go more neutral. I have grays. Um, there's really only a few colors that I don't like for myself. Um, I don't really like red, so it's rare to see me work with red. Um, same with orange and same with probably yellow and maybe even green. The first like four colors of the rainbow. And then also brown. I'm not a huge fan of brown. So I tend, I guess what that says about me is I tend to go for cool colors, purple, blue, pink, and gray. Those are my favorite colors, but like, like this shawl here, I do sometimes vary and I like that too. Um, as far as how I choose colors for a design or project, it just kind of depends. Right now I'm working a lot out of stash so it's kind of what I have but I do really take my time when choosing I will probably take out a few different color combinations and set them on the back of my couch in my yarn room and they will just sit there for a couple days and you know I'll walk by them and I'll go mm, let me try this instead or oh, I don't think that I'd really like that um, it also helps me to take pictures of my yarns together um, and then look at them that way. I don't know why, it just kind of changes things when you're not so up close to it. Um, and then especially if I'm choosing something that I need contrast, I'll change the picture uh, filter to black and white so I can see if I'm gonna get contrast. But the best thing for me is to actually, once I have it narrowed down, to actually knit a swatch or crochet a swatch and see how things work. Because I'd rather put the time into the swatch than have to, then make an entire like shawl or something and not like it or not get the result that I'm looking for. So that's kind of how I choose for projects and for designs. Of course, if it's for a design and I'm working with a yarn dyer, a lot of times they have um, color colors already put together or ideas. And so I do tend to go with their expertise on that. Okay, question number three. How do you feel about knitters and crocheters modifying your designs or using yarns that you would not use. So um, this doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> I think it's great when people take my designs and patterns and modify them. Um, I, I feel like that that's kind of what we are doing as designers anyway, is taking concepts and ideas and changing them up and modifying them. Um, I mean, there's only so many ways to knit a sweater. It's just the creativity to put different patterns, different colors, different stitches in there. Um, so 
yeah, I kind of feel like that's all what we all do anyway. So it really, it doesn't bother me when people do that. Of course, when you do change um, a pa somebody's pattern, if you um, still give them credit for the original idea, that's always um, ideal. Um, and then as far as if people choose yarn that I wouldn't use, it's their, it's their project. So that doesn't bother me. Um, sometimes it works out like, even better like if i thought that kind of yarn or type of yarn wouldn't work and it works out even better i'm like cool and then it gives me new ideas um the only time i'm pretty specific about what to use is when my i have testers testing a new pattern for me because then i do have a specific vision and i want to communicate that to other people i want I want what my testers produce to represent the vision that I had in mind. So that is where I'll say, you know, please use this type of yarn. Um, but they always get to choose, you know, their colors and everything like that. And um, so that's really the only time that I am more specific. Um, and then also, you know, following the pattern because that helps me test it. Um, but a lot of times, like especially with something small like when i did the can cozies and bottle cozies my test knitters would go through it so fast that after that they would say is it okay if i try some different things and i'm like sure go for it um so that's always fun i think it's great um when people get creative okay number four and i'm going to take a water break okay this it, the next three are like super creative so I'm, I'm excited for these i had to rule out a couple of questions that i really wanted to include because there were just so many so keep asking your awesome questions on instagram because they are so good okay number four if you could only knit or crochet at one time a day every day what time would you pick well obviously i'm going to pick the longest time that i can so i am going to pick if i only could crochet or knit at one point of the day, it would be after dinner time to bedtime. So that's when I do probably most of my, the majority of my knitting crochet anyway, when I'm sitting down for the evening, you know, dinner's done, chores are done, shower's done, work is done. I have, you know, a few hours, which is really great, I know, um, to just enjoy. And so we're watching TV, I'm knitting and crocheting. It helps me feel relaxed. It also helps me feel productive. So that's definitely the time of day that I would choose to keep if I couldn't knit or crochet any other times. Okay, this one's cool too. Number five, what is a word or a few to describe your knitting, crochet, journey, or style? So I feel like my knitting and crochet style is changing all the time. So let's just talk about right now. <laughs> if I could describe it in a few words, I would say um, pink, <laughs> I would say simple, um, I would say useful, because I'm really into making things that are, I don't know if useful is the right word, but like I'm really into making things that are things that I actually want and will use and are, I just can't think of the right word. I was going to say utilitarian, but that sounds like so rigid like only things that are i don't know but i would say yeah simple simple and i don't know easy that's kind of what i'm going for right now is like easy <laughs> so that's probably how i would describe it like in the moment right now that's really what i am vibing with okay last one um number six what do you do with all of the things that you make? You can't possibly keep them all. Um, so right now I have a pretty full closet of all of my knitted and crocheted items from throughout the years. For reference, I have been knitting and crocheting for about 15 years and not, not as intensely as I am right now. I would say as intensely as I am right now, it's only been like, when did I graduate from college? I'd say after college is when I really got back into things. So maybe six years, maybe maybe even fewer because I feel like I really got into it in the past like three or four once I started watching podcasts. Um, but anyway, so it's been it's been a number of years. I have a lot of stuff, but I I um, keep a lot of things on 
I have like one of those over the door shoe things and I put my like scarves and hats and things that'll kind of roll up in there. And then I have another tiered um, rack that I put sweaters and like large shawls in because I make a lot of large shawls right now. And that's getting really full. I'd like to move them over to my drawer. So I guess I keep a lot of things, but to me, now that I have so many, um, my knitted, knitted and crocheted items are a lot like clothing to me. They go in and out of fashion. What was really fun and what I felt looked great, you know, five years ago may not be my style right now. So I'm starting to let things go, which can be really, really hard when you've worked hours and hours and spent lots of time and money investing in a piece. Um, but you know what? You deserve to have a beautiful looking closet and space and not all that clutter in your mind. So I have recently started getting rid of things. You're probably going to be horrified to hear that the last time I got rid of stuff, I just, I just needed to get stuff out. I had, a, it was a lot of like um, store-bought clothes too, but I actually just took it to Goodwill. I know, um, but in the future, I'm probably going to do another purge here, maybe soon, actually. Um, I, we really need to clean out our closet, so I'll probably be getting rid of some more things. And what I might do with those instead is, I don't know if people would want this. You guys have to let me know. Would you want handmade items as a giveaway? I feel like that's tricky because I don't, like these are quality items, they're beautiful, they just may be things that either I'm not wearing as much as I thought, I've kind of grown disinterested in the colors, um, but they're still beautiful makes. Would you be interested if I used those as giveaway prizes and, you know, mailed them off to other people? Because I really don't want to just throw them away. I, I feel weird about that. Um, I would rather them go to somebody who would use them. So let me know if you think that would be something that you would want. If not, I'll probably just take them to Goodwill because at least somebody can have them. But it would be better to give them to knitters who understand and appreciate them. Okay, I'm going to do three quick questions from the Ravelry thread. Actually, one of them I already answered. So we're just going to touch that real quick. Um, this question is from M. Ruffle. Um, Hi, Natalie. I know you are looking for and maybe have found testers for your 50 gram and mini yarn cozy light. But if not, and for the future, how can I become a test knitter for your patterns? So I did do this 50 and 20 gram a little differently than I normally would. I went ahead and privately messaged some testers because I had a list of people from my original yarn cozy light that there were so many applicants I couldn't um, I couldn't get to everybody. So I still had lots of testers that were great and ready to use, so I just emailed them. Um, but in the future, um, please follow me on Instagram and look there. That's where I will call for testers. I, um, I don't know how long I will do it that way. I've done it different ways in the past. I've done an email list and you know different stuff. Um, but for right now, I am going to call for it on Instagram and then I will have an application, a Google form uh, to fill out. So it is open to everyone. There's just a few requirements. You do have to have a public Instagram, um, be a Ravelry user, and then also have an Instagram feed where you are mostly focused on knitting and crochet um, with you know pictures that I can see that you've taken of your knitting and crochet so that I know how you would take pictures of the final object that you're testing for me. So there's more details on that on my Instagram. I have a little story highlight you can go click on and learn more about that. But I will update that when things change. Okay, next question is from FiberFox2. Um, she says, I love your great eye for matching yarn with projects. Thank you. I have never gotten more compliments about how people love how I pick colors and I'm like, shocked because I've never thought that that was a skill that I had. So thank you so much for that. Um, sorry, here we go. I have a beautiful green tonal with sparkles, or I'm sorry, a beautiful green tonal yarn with sparkles for socks. Can you recommend a pattern cuff down of your own or other designers? Yes, I am going to recommend to you Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. She's got a podcast, but I think her designs 
are either Kay Litton or Crazy Sock Lady designs. I'll make sure to link her in the description box, but please go check out her patterns. She's got tons of sock patterns and I'm almost certain every single one is cuffed down because I know she likes to knit cuff down with a heel flop and gusset. Of course, you could put your own um, heel pattern in if you want to, um, but she's got so many patterns, beautiful, beautiful patterns. So I would definitely head over to her for some great options. And then last question for today, I'm gonna leave a couple out um, for next week. <laughs> okay, this one is from M&M Crochet. And this is Madison. Madison says, hi, Natalie. I've just started watching your podcast and I love it. Thank you so much. It's great to knit and crochet, especially with all the extra free time staying home right now. I'm currently going backwards watching all of your previous podcasts. Thank you. Okay, I recently got to the point of seeing your Playtime shawl in two-tone and I adore it. I'll put a picture of Playtime shawl in here so you can see what that looks like. I had previously skipped over the pattern on your Ravelry, but when I saw the two-tone, I knew I had to eventually make it. Where do you put the color changes in the pattern to achieve the look you did? You've also inspired me to get over my fear of fingering weight with your beautiful finished projects. Yes, <laughs> I love using fingering weight. It has the best drape. Um, that's just my opinion, but give it a try. You might like it. Um, so Madison, I am so glad you said that because you reminded me that I have forgotten to go back into my playtime shawl, which is a crocheted shawl, and update it for a two-tone. So I think the reason that I didn't go back and update it when I finished that this January, or finished the two-tone version this January, is that I had, I um, realized that you could only make the small version, there's two sizes, two sizes and I realized you could only make the small version with the way that I planned it out. So I think why I didn't go back and add it is I wanted to figure out how you could make both versions and give a couple options. So give me some time on that. Um, I Do I have notes on it? I might have notes on it on my personal project page on how I did it so you could go look there. Let me check real fast, hold on. Okay, no, I don't have notes on it. I'm officially the worst. <laughs> um, so I think I will try to go back and add notes on my personal project page so that if you have the pattern now, you can make the two-tone in the small version. But before I add it to the actual pattern and send out an update to everyone who has it on Ravelry, let me make another one and figure out if you can do both sizes. Because this is a two-skein shawl and when you do two colors, um, I want it to still be two skeins, so I need to go back and figure that out. So that might be a good next cast on for me. I I know it's kind of um, in bad taste to say that you love your own pattern, but if you don't love your own pattern, why are you putting it out? <laughs> so I really love the Playtime shawl. It's, it's one of my favorites, and it's one pattern that I've actually gone back and made more since publishing it. So I do really like that one. And then I wanted to update, last week I answered a question about um, swatching or washing different um, materials. Somebody had a super wash, uh, a super wash wool from Knit Picks. What was it? I think it was Wool of the Andes Super Wash. And they said they um, took the advice that I gave to wash the swatch and the swatch came out fuzzy, like kind of like it had mohair on it. And so with, with that knowledge they were able to give their um the recipient of that sweater like the swatch and the sweater and say if you want to you can wash it it's gonna look like this but if you don't want it to be too fuzzy you can hand wash it so i thought that was great i'm really glad to hear that that was helpful but i am sorry that the yarn got fuzzy super wash yarn if it's truly super wash i feel like should not do that but that's happened to me in the past with Superwash where it's shrunk. So I just try to hand wash everything if I can. Okay, let's talk about news. So the original Yarn Cozy Light, I'm bending down to grab mine here. Here's two versions, the plain and simple and the cable, the faux cabled version. Um, this pattern is uh, still on sale. So if you want to grab it, um, for 30% off, go to my love letter video. I'll make sure to link it. And the pattern code is right in the beginning of that video. Um, and you can get 30% off through 
this Friday, May 15th at midnight central time. So if you are still interested in that pattern, head over and grab it while it's still on sale. After that, it just goes to its original price. Um, I'm working on the, the mini yarn cozy light, but we talked about that. That one will be coming May 29th. I'm so, I'm so excited. I wish I had, um, um, not that anyone's forcing me to do make videos and stuff, but I need to carve out more time in my schedule for working on um, knitting patterns because I wanna make like so many cozy samples and there's only so much time and only so many hands. So I need to get Kent knitting. That's what I need to do. Um, I wanted to talk about cows. The Gila cow is over. If you missed it, I announced winners in last in the last podcast. I had one winner contact me and the other one hasn't yet. So hopefully you see it and let me know soon. I'm excited to get those prizes um, out to you. But I did want to talk about upcoming cows since we don't have one going right now. So I've been brainstorming and I really, really before everything that's happening in our world right now, I really wanted to do something special for Worldwide Knit in Public Day, which is coming up June 13th. It's a Saturday. Um, I was thinking it would be really fun to do some kind of, you know, like if you're outside and knitting, like send a picture, but obviously with what's going on, that might not be possible. We're probably not gonna be gathering um, for that. But, that doesn't mean that we can't gather virtually. So I thought it would be really fun in honor of Worldwide Knit and Public Day to do like a still worldwide knit, but maybe at home, um, kind of on that day or on that weekend. So this is just something that I've just started brainstorming. I'm gonna try to think of something fun and awesome. We will probably get on YouTube live for this because while I'd love to do Zoom, there's a limit of 100 people, at least on the subscription that I currently pay for, um, and I don't want to limit it. So I want it to be unlimited, as many people that can get on as possible. So stay tuned for that. I think that'll be really fun. And also in that same frame, I've been promising that I would have a knitting in public video coming out at some point. It was planned for that weekend, but it doesn't seem appropriate right now to talk about knitting in public, so that will have to wait until a little bit later. Um, plus, another cal is Sock Week. Um, that is not until the end of July, early August, so I will be um, announcing a lot more about that in late June, but Sock Week 2020 is happening. Stay tuned, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link um, Sock Week 2019 videos down below so you can go check that out. And then this week I had a new video come out. It is called free ways to support your faves. So this is a video that um, I've been wanting to make for a while now, especially since I've had questions about um, YouTube in particular, like, Natalie, how can we like support people on YouTube? Do we need to watch the ads? I've heard watch them, I've heard not watch them, you know, all kinds of things. So I recorded a video where I talk about not only YouTube, but also Instagram and Ravelry, and I have tons of ways you can support all of your favorite designers, podcasters, and yarn dyers without spending a single penny. So if it's not in your budget right now, or, you know, sometimes designers come out with patterns and you're like, I'm not, I'm, that's not something that I would make, but I love them and I want to help them. I have all the tips for you in that video. So I'll make sure to link that. Um, go check it out. There's a lot, there's so many things that you can do to help support um, small businesses. Okay, so now it's my turn to say thank you to you for 3,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I do have a giveaway, but I just want to say thank you to everybody first. So I have my cute little sign. What's funny is that, I don't know if you can tell with the 3,000, my letter board <laughs> didn't come with um, very many numbers. It only came with two zeros, so I had to use O's. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. So it's 3000. <laughs> um, but thank you guys. Like, I honestly was floored today when I got to 3000 subscribers. I am super goal oriented. And so at the beginning of the year, I sat down with my Instagram and my YouTube and I set some goals for myself. I looked at how I was growing, like the rate that I was growing on YouTube. 
and I set myself a goal of 3,000 subscribers, but that goal was for December. <laughs> it was for the end of the year, and it is only May 12th right now. And I'm just, I don't know, like I said, I'm just flabbergasted and floored that I've already hit my end of year goal before the middle of the year. Like, I don't know, that's insane. So thank you guys so much. This just means that you're, you're here, you're showing up every week, um, supporting me, sharing, um, sharing my podcast, all of that just means the world. And I, I don't know like what else to do, but like say thank you. I am not an emotional person, but I was like a little bit teary today. <laughs> That's as emotional as I get. I, I guess I'm not, I'm super, like I feel a lot of emotions, especially happy. I, you know, happy is my like middle name almost. Um, but I never really get like teary or crying. And I was like, I went up to my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, look, I have 3,000 subscribers today. I, I can't even believe it. And um, yeah, he gave a silly suggestion for a giveaway. He said, he, he said, the winner can hang out with me and Toaster. <laughs> and I'm like, everybody wants to do that. They just want you to be on the podcast. Could you just do that? <laughs> so maybe that will be kind of something coming up. I keep saying that, but I really want to do that. But here's the real giveaway. So let me get uh, the... Um, the giveaway rules are going to be in the description box, um, but I just want to make sure that I say everything correctly. Oh, also, um, this week, or yeah, within the last seven days, I hit 300 subscribers over on my other YouTube channel, This and That. So it was just, I don't know, it's like a, such a good week. I, ha I have 300 and 3,000 subscribers, like hitting those milestones. I don't know. It's every little bit is is something to celebrate. So if you are also growing a business, don't forget to stop and celebrate all of those milestones. Okay, 3,000 subscriber giveaway. It's gonna be held here on YouTube, and basically all you need to do is comment on this video here, episode 63. Um, for every 20 comments that I have on this video, I am giving away a either a Ravelry or Etsy pattern of your choice valued at $10 or less. Um, so basically, oops, sorry. I wanted to do a giveaway that I could give to a lot of people. Um, also something that was virtual so I could give it to you instantly and not have to worry about, you know, spreading germs through mail or anything at this time. Um, but I also wanted to support other um, small businesses. So if you want one of my patterns, totally fine. But if you want another designer's pattern, you can have that if you're the winner um, up to $10. So again, for every 20 comments on this video, I'm giving away one pattern valued up to $10. And um, that will end a week from to or yeah, a week from today, which is going to be Thursday. So Thursday will be the 14th. So the 21st. So it'll end Am I saying that right? I'll put it down here because I can't do all the math in my head <laughs> while I'm talking, but I will close it and I will draw however many winners that there are gonna be, and then I will contact you. So make sure you um, put a comment on this video if you want to be entered to win a pattern of your choice. Okay, life right now. Um, two more weeks of school left, which is just crazy. Um, so yeah, I feel like coming up soon, I'm gonna kind of get into a new groove, really get to work on Nitty Natty and this and that, which I'm super, super excited about. Um, if you wanna hear more about my like summer schedule and routine, I believe I'm going to be talking about that over on This and That. So head over there um, to that channel and um, subscribe to that if you are interested in my routines in general. I have um, a nighttime and a morning routine on there. And I mean, that might not be something that you're interested in. If so, 100% okay. Um, but personally, I love to watch people's routines especially morning routines. I went through a phase where I looked at like all of these 5 a.m. morning routines, which I don't wake up at 5 a.m. That's really early. Um, but I just, it's fun to see how, like how regular people live their life and how they can be productive and stuff. So if you're interested in my summer schedule, how I'm going to be, um, you know, balancing pattern design and recording videos and all of that stuff, um, in the summer because I'm a teacher, I have the summer off um, and I get to fully 
devote to that. Um, head over there and I should have a video on that coming up soon. Lastly, bringing me joy, honestly, same thing, that summer is coming. I mean, it's different because we're not gonna get to go on vacation this summer. Um, we're, I don't know, it's just all gonna be different, but there is a good sense for me being a teacher of relaxation that comes with the summer. I don't have to um, stress about work for a little while. I wish that everyone had a job like that where you get a nice long break and you get a fresh start every single year. Um, so that's probably not realistic for any job other than a teacher that I can think of. Um, maybe even like military. I don't know. I don't want to sound ignorant on that, but like you do at some point get leave and then you get to go back fresh. So maybe that's a similar mindset. That's the only thing I can think of besides teacher. But anyway, if you don't have that in your job, if you can create that in any way, like even a week long break, highly, highly suggested. It just makes you feel like ready. Like even if you take your summer not on a vacation, you just like clean up your house, clean up your clothes, get your life together, you know, on a routine, whatever. It just makes you feel amazing going back. So I'm excited for the summer, for all the things that I will get to do with Nitty Natty and this and that. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Uh, I think that that is it. Make sure to go check out Holly. Her um, podcast and channel will be linked down below. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you want a chance to win a pattern. And yeah, I'll be back next week with more knitting and crochet. In the meantime, follow me on Instagram at Knitty Natty for everything that is happening in between. All right, I will see you guys on Tuesday with a new video, and then I will see you for the podcast next Thursday. Bye.